Hello, and welcome to Math Matters. I'm Miss Matthews, and today we'll be continuing our work with probability. Last week, we were learning about probability words that describe the likelihood an outcome could happen. Today, we are going to create our own sets to match different probability outcomes. Also, as you are working today, you will have an opportunity to practice your portrait of a graduate skills for being goal-directed and resilient by staying on task during our lesson time together today. For today's lesson, you will need a pencil, crayons, and a piece of paper. We'll wait for you as you gather these materials. Take a look at these pictures. How are they the same? How are they different? You can share your ideas with someone or write down your thinking. I'll give you a few moments to do that. Can you come up with another reason why they are the same but different? You may have noticed that they are the same because they both have red, purple, yellow, and blue outcomes. You may have noticed that they both have three purple, two red, two yellow, and one blue. You also may have noticed that there are eight sections on the spinner and eight marbles in the jar. You may have noticed that they are different because one is a spinner and the other is a jar of marbles. You may have also noticed that the arrow of the spinner has landed on red, but no marble has been picked out of the jar. Last week, we learned about words that we could use to describe the probability of an outcome happening. Let's remind ourselves of those words. If we know something is absolutely going to happen, I use the word certain. Events that are certain belong on the one on the number line. When I know that there is no way that something can happen, I say that it is impossible. Events that are impossible belong at the zero on the number line. Some events have an outcome that is equally likely. Events that are equally likely belong at the half mark on the number line. Sometimes outcomes fall in between these numbers and are described as either unlikely or likely. When an event will probably happen, but it's not absolutely certain, we use the word likely. Likely events would be placed between equally likely and certain on the number line. When an event will probably not happen, but it's not completely impossible, we use the word unlikely. Unlikely events would be placed between impossible and equally likely. Take a moment to look at this picture. What do you notice? What do you wonder? You may have noticed that there is a brown bag with 10 circles next to it. You might be wondering, what's inside that bag? Or, are all those marbles going to go into that bag? We are going to use these noticings to help us with our next problem. Let's jump in and think about this scenario. You are designing a probability game and you want to put 
10 colored marbles into a bag so that the probability of selecting a red one is likely but not certain. Take a moment and think, what might the marbles in that bag look like? We know from before that certain means it is definitely going to happen. There is no other possible outcome. But for our example, we'll need at least one marble that is not red to make the probability of selecting a red marble likely, but not certain. Take some time and draw what your bag of marbles could look like. You can either color in your marbles or use a letter to show which color you would want each marble to be. Let's look at some of the drawings that some third graders came up with. Julia drew her 10 marbles and colored eight of them in red. Julia only had two marbles that were not red. So it is likely that you would pick a red marble from her bag. Natalie's bag looked like this. You might notice that all but one of Natalie's marbles are red. This again means that you are likely to pick a red marble from her bag. Look at the last two bags. Did both Carlos and Jaden design a bag where the probability of selecting a red marble is likely but not certain? That's right, they did. Although Carlos and Jaden both designed bags with a different number of red marbles, they both designed bags where more than half of the marbles were red. That makes it likely that you would pull a red marble from their bags. Now let's try to design a game where the probability of selecting a blue marble is equally likely to the probability of selecting a yellow marble. Remember, equally likely means that you have the same chance of getting a blue marble as you do of getting a yellow marble. There will be the same amount of blue marbles as yellow marbles. Take some time and draw what your bag of marbles could look like. You can either color in your marbles or use a letter to show which color you would want each marble to be. Let's look at some of the drawings that some other third graders came up with. Brian drew his 10 marbles and colored one yellow and one blue. 
he colored the rest of his marbles red. Brian has the same number of yellow marbles as blue marbles, so it is equally likely that you would pick a yellow or a blue marble from his bag. Delia's bag looks like this. You might notice that all of Delia's marbles are either yellow or blue. She has five blue marbles and five yellow marbles. This means that you are equally likely to pick a yellow or a blue marble from her bag. Look at Ayub's bag. Did he design a bag where the probability of picking a yellow or a blue marble is equally likely? That's right, he did. Although his bag of marbles looks different than Brian's and Delia's, he designed a bag where there is the same number of blue marbles as yellow marbles. This makes it equally likely that you would pull a yellow or a blue marble from his bag. Take a look inside the bag that Catherine has created. She says that it is unlikely that you would pick a blue marble. Do you agree or disagree with Catherine? You can share your ideas with someone or write down your thinking. I'll give you a few moments to do that. If you disagreed with Catherine, you would be correct. It is actually likely that you would pick a blue marble. There are 10 marbles, six are blue and four are red. More than half of the marbles are blue. So it is likely that you would pick a blue marble, but not certain. For an extra challenge, change Catherine's set of marbles to match what she originally said. She wants it to be unlikely that you could pick a blue marble. After you come up with one way, I challenge you to draw a different set. Today we continued learning about words that we can use to describe the likelihood that an outcome could happen by creating our own sets while practicing being goal-directed and resilient as you stayed on task during this lesson. Which emoji represents where you are in this learning? Thanks for watching Math Matters. I'm Ms. Matthews. I hope you have a fun-filled mathematical day and keep on counting.